Switching gears now to former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. He is laying out what President Biden is really like in negotiations behind closed doors. Take a listen. You'd he still has a teleprompter doors. when you meet behind closed doors, but the mean? teleprompter are cards. I found when I met with him, it would just be a couple. He would read from the card. Just the two of you, he and he's cards reading from cards. It's it, it like four of us, yeah. And if you deviate, like, I didn't sit and negotiate him with him the debt ceiling. It's not capable. He just sticks to the cards. And if you go, if you deviate from the cards, he can't continue onward there. Now, the White House is pushing back, but once again, look at this. The images of the president glued to his cards on his lap in meetings with world leaders have become very familiar to all of us. Joining me now is Gianno Caldwell, Fox News political analyst, and Doug Collins, former Georgia congressman. Great to see you both, guys. Uh, Doug, first to you. This, to is, be with you. this has really become a Potemkin presidency. You remember the... Stalin used to have these fake phony villages that he would take reporters by to show how great the Soviet Union was, and there was, there was nothing behind him. They were just a facade. That was it. That's what this presidency is. It's just a facade. I mean, somebody else is doing all the work for this guy. Well, and you can see the work because the work product's sitting in his lap in the cards. I mean, this has been a, an obvious problem for a while. And it's also, especially when you have to go to a press conference, and not only do we have cards, but we got pictures of the individuals we're supposed to talk to. So it's a picture book uh, time. The, look, Jean-Pierre, Pierre Jean-Pierre Crin, she actually said in the uh, press conference about his health report the other day, he doesn't need a cognitive test. He takes a test every day. Well, here's the easiest way to prove that right. Put him before reporters and let him be asked real questions. Let him have to deal with questions that he can't prepare for, not Saturday, uh, you know, late night ho talk show host in which they scripted it, prepped it, and even gave him his aviators to pull out his props. That's how you can tell if he's actually able to process and do the job of president. But Gianna, when he does talk extemporaneously, he does, he, first of all, he doesn't do it well. We don't have to belabor that point. Everybody knows yeah. what I'm talking about. But, but what he's saying just isn't true. I mean, whether he's talking about inflation, he, he was on yesterday talking about crime, saying... Hey, America, the world, you know, the crime stats are getting better. Every city in America is a joy to live in right now. He, he doesn't deal with the smash and grabs, with the carjackings going up. Or he didn't mention once about migrant crime, where we have these horrific examples right in front of us. And, and we have many national examples of that, that migrant crime and what you just mentioned. And if I can really quickly, in the city of Chicago, as an example, back in 2021, and we know that about 30,000 folks, over 30,000 folks have come, migrants from the border, mostly Venezuelans. In 2021, there was about six Venezuelans arrested before the migrants began to arrive. Since then, migrant Venezuelan crime has gone up 12,000 percent in the oh city God. of Chicago, 12,000 percent in terms of arrest. This is a crisis, and the American people have lost faith in Joe Biden's presidency. When you look at the numbers, you look at the polling, 70 percent of Americans, including Democrats, uh, believe that Joe Biden has mishandled the border. Yeah. We know that. When we're talking about his competency, um, and there was an NBC poll which they put together numbers for Trump and Joe Biden, Trump is over Biden by 16 percent. 16 points and 48 percent when it comes to competency and effectiveness. And I know those numbers have grown since then because that's a poll from last month. We are in trouble here, but there is the opportunity to change the page on the Biden presidency. And I hope every American is paying close attention to what many world leaders have laughed at and said, wow, America's in decline. Yeah, we but, need but, changing. But, we but need when we now. saw him yesterday, we realized he's not ready to turn the page. He's not going to do it. He, he didn't do it with regard to crime, with regard to the border issue. And of course, in minority communities in particular, they're so fed up with the fact that illegal immigrants are, are getting services turned over to them that citizens of the United States, taxpaying citizens, don't have, particularly in minority communities. Gianno and then Doug. And, and, and that's exactly why you're seeing Joe Biden in places like uh, Los Angeles, where he's trying to meet with voters, and you're going to see him in New York, and you're going to see him in Chicago, I'm yeah. sure, because folks are so upset. And, and obviously, African Americans have been a very big part of the Democratic stronghold in those liberal cities. If they're going to be serious and not vote for Democrats, yeah. then we got purple states all around. Doug, so this is could be a real big upset. Doug, you, uh, have ten, you only Trump have win. 10 seconds, but it comes down to a matter of trust. Do you trust your, your lying eyes, or do you trust what Joe Biden's saying, doesn't it? 
Exactly. Longest uh, general election in history. You got Donald Trump, who has a record, who'll stick to immigration and economics to these folks. You got Joe Biden, who, who has to yeah. defend a total reckless disregard in the last three and a half years. There's Doug your, Collins, there's your race. Gianno Caldwell, Excellent great point. to see you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it.